2023 wasn't the best year on Roblox, but 2024, I think, is hopeful. This is going to be my top 10 most anticipated games of this year. If y'all feel like I missed any, feel free to comment them down below, starting with honorable mention number one. For my first honorable mention, I have Type Soul Remastered. I'm sure a lot of you remember what Type Soul is. This is a new, or I guess I should say upcoming, hardcore Bleach game. The game came out a little while ago, which is why it's not on the actual list, but it got shut down. It has a new owner, and it's coming back out completely refurbished. I won't say too much about this because not much has been said, but Type Soul is coming back. Hopefully, don't fumble it this time. Up to the second, I will mention Clover RPG. This is a new Roblox Black Clover game that I actually had the opportunity to play. You load in the game, and immediately the first thing that I like is you actually have a storyline. The character is presented with options, or at least a dialogue, which most games nowadays don't do. You pretty much just sit there and beat up bandits for three hours. And don't get me wrong, this game does have bandits as well, but it's presented in a more digestible format. This is not a game where you can just sit there and beat up NPCs for 10 hours. Since this is just an auto mention, I won't say too much about it. For the next auto mention, auto mention number three. Three, I have Shonen Smash, which is an upcoming Super Smash Bros game, or I guess Super Smash Bros anime game. Like Type Soul, this game came out a while ago and it's being remastered. It's made by my boy Ten the Warrior. This dude is a fire dev. He's been coding for years now, and yeah, I'm just a huge fan of Smash Bros and anime. So when you bring those two things together, I think this game could be real fun. Outer mention number four, I have Hunter X Mayhem, which is a new open world Hunter x Hunter game. I did briefly test this game, so I can say some more about it. But yeah, one thing I liked about this game is that it actually has a really unique system for the hot suits if you watch hunter x hunter you know that there are a bunch of various hot suits which are the abilities in the show and one thing i liked is that my boy yakris actually gave each individual hot suit traits yeah hunter x mayhem is an open world hunter x hunter game i won't talk too much about it considering it's just an honor mention for the next honor mention at number five we have shonen unleash which is an open i guess platform battleground game yeah this game is really well known purely because of it's just beautiful aesthetics the game just looks friggin beautiful if you've seen youtubers cover it you know that the cutscenes are just gorgeous and that's my best selling point about the game to be honest is the game just looks really good if you enjoy playing aba type fighters and you want one that's just extremely visually appealing then shonen leash is definitely the game for you i don't mention number six i forgot to add this game i don't know how i have hunter x game it's a new roblox hunter x hunter game and it's probably one of the first actual hunter x hunter games i've played that was made like it was based off the actual show it has an actual hunter exam which i don't know why more hunter x hunter games don't do i mean that's like the entire show but overall just a cool little hunter x hunter game i like it it's dope. Anyway, moving on to the actual list. At number 10, I have Abaddon. Abaddon is a new open world Greek mythology based hardcore game. The first thing that I thought when I saw this game is that it kind of reminded me a little bit of Deep Oak in that you have various classes, great sword, daggers, sword, pistols, and each one seems to have their own strengths and weaknesses. Most games seem to struggle when it comes to balancing. This game does have magic too. There's not too much out on the game right now, but I did actually cover this in a live stream a while ago, so I figured I'd throw it in the list. At number 9, I have Magoi, which is a new open world Magoi game which is crazy because i can't really remember the last time we got a game based off magi or even sinbad game for one the versatility of the combat is what i'd say this game's biggest selling point was there are so many different classes and races as well the combat just looks so fluid that you would just think that the character has so much control over his player it's an r15 game which means everything is animated in the r15 style which just gives the animators more freedom to do what they gotta do i don't know if this game's gonna be closed community or public i think it's gonna be public hopefully it is because combat like this with friends would actually be so tall so that's all i'll say for that at number eight i have one that i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with and that is pocket anime pocket anime is a new open world pokemon game where the goal is to collect pokemon that are not pokemon they're actually anime characters but and after playing the game for the first time myself it's actually really well made i don't love pokemon i played a few of the games myself but even as a non-pokemon fan i was able to actually hop in the game and enjoy it it was a little bit hard from the rip but you can literally explore the ocean on mihawk's coffin boat or aces striker if you like pokemon and like anime i think you'll like this game that, that's pretty much it. I just don't see how you won't. At number seven, I have Sinborn. And Sinborn is an open world, and I'll use that word a lot. An open world hardcore RPG game with really like just cool, unique mechanics. Its biggest selling point, in my opinion, is that it's just constantly looking to do new things, whether it's new combat mechanics, new ways of traversal. The game has such a beautiful parkour system. I think this game is still kind of early in development. When it's done, I'm beyond it because I just personally love hardcore games. That's just me. Moving on to number six, I have another game I'm sure a lot of y'all are familiar with being Jujutsu Infinite. Now, this is a game that's definitely dropping this year and Jujutsu Infinite I, I gotta say this game is uh interesting because I gotta be honest before I actually played this game I wasn't a huge fan of it but then after I actually sat down and played this game for about 12 hours for video I realized this game is actually really good hear me out Jujutsu Infinite features a variety of just things to do I don't know how else to put it like I was sitting on that game and it literally would not allow me to get bored because you're sitting there and you have a new boss to fight or a new skill
skill to unlock or you have a new wave to complete there's literally just always something to do now what i will say is the game is grindy as hell and if you want to get anywhere it's kind of like gpo in which you have to pay for certain things like a second knee bag or two times the xp and i hate that stuff but number five i have one of my personal favorites i'm guilty i'm a little biased here this is a game called one piece of blue now this is a roblox one piece game created by uzuki who has made eternal battlegrounds and your bizarre adventure i've spoken with him and this game is actually coming back which is why it's on this list one piece blue was a hardcore open world roblox one piece game i know y'all are sick of me saying open worlds what i love so much about this game is that it was actually a real one piece game there were various subclasses you could actually play throughout the one piece world by being a pirate if you wanted to get stronger one piece blue you literally had to fight i'm sorry i know all y'all pve enjoyers everybody who loves sitting there and just beating up on logs and training dummies and npcs for 10 hours this is your worst nightmare right now but it is what it is you were not gonna sit there and beat up on npcs for three hours it just was not gonna happen if you play without a crew in this game you were screwed as a one piece fan my boy was to keep out a cook he made yba y'all the guy made your bizarre adventure and eternal battlegrounds he has a good track record as far as making fun combat so what do y'all think this dude is gonna do with a one piece game when half of this jojo game has one piece in it anyway right above one piece blue before i ramble about that too long at number four i have yaiba which is once again another open world i'm sorry hardcore roblox demon slayer game I'm sure y'all beginning to notice the trend of hardcore games and being higher on the list it's like i'm saying that way too much we really don't know much about the game i just know it's gonna be heat the one thing i can tell y'all is that the combat system looks absolutely gorgeous the head developer on this game is a dude named snarliel who also worked on anime showdown so the head developer on this game is a dude named snarliel he worked on anime showdown i'm pretty sure he made most of if not all of the effects for that game so this guy is a crazy developer yo that game looked absolutely gorgeous so now imagine that on a demon slayer game i wish i could say more about yaiba but We'll just have to wait and see to be honest maybe i'm wrong putting it up this high on the list but based off anime showdown and the anime that this is being like brought into i really feel like this dude snarly is about to cook i love a good demon slayer game especially a hardcore one the opposite of project slayers i don't want to just sit there and beat up level three bandits for three hours combat looks interesting it looks intense the way in which you traverse you use the map to your advantage when you're fighting the terrain like i love that the game just looks interesting i want to play it i can't lie At number three we have dragon ball final stand remastered this game is actually coming back snake world is actually not only bringing back final stand i guess i shouldn't say bringing back because it's never left but he's reviving the game y'all and this game literally made my childhood dragon ball final stand i'm sure made a lot of y'all's childhoods too but it is actually the best dragon ball game ever made it's pretty much just xenoverse but roblox no other dragon ball game since has ever been able to recreate that same feeling replicate the same feeling that final stand has just given to us the game is nostalgic traveling through different planets level up getting stronger i don't think any dbc game has even come close to touching the level that final stand has and yeah i mean that boy snake world he's bringing the game back y'all i wish i could say more but as far as we can see right now he's just posting various development sneaks i think the game will be coming out later if i do get the opportunity to play the game early of course or get any information about it i'll be the first people to know so yeah with that being said i wish i could say more but dragon ball final stand is coming back y'all i can't wait to play that number two i have holy war x and this game actually like really surprised surprise me and the reason why i say that is because every single time this dude alprex sees something wrong with this game he changes it like he improves it that might not sound crazy to y'all but a lot of developers on roblox they like see stuff that's wrong with their game and they don't change it polywork is a new roblox 7 deadly sins game it's just a unique game and what makes it so unique is like i just said the game is just always improving i personally think the game has the best mount system on roblox i don't think i've ever encountered a game with a mount system as good as holy war x and i just don't think i have the mount system is it's freaking amazing you get in a giant manta ray and the game has actual physics so good to the point where you would think that you're in the freaking game one thing i didn't like in the past was kind of how slow and non-weighted the combat was but he's even fixed that so i just i personally don't see a downside to the game as long as alpha rex continues to just fix and fix and fix and fix and that's not something i see a lot of devs do so i gotta give him his props the game is constantly improving so i mean even if there's something i didn't like i'm sure enough people would be like yo alpha this is not good and bro would just fix it and i gotta respect that moving on to number one the game that i'm personally most anticipated for in 2024 even though i guess it should be obvious is lc's and the main thing is i love one piece and it seems to be the closest thing to an actual one piece game aside from one piece blue from what i've seen so far rail seats is doing things that i've seen no other one piece game do like for example if you have hockey you can literally reflect attacks and it's not goofy now i'm not saying that no one piece game will ever touch this game because it does have some kinks that i feel like need to be fixed certain sound effects could be more realistic i do feel like it's the closest to a guaranteed one piece game overall what i think sets 
Terrell sees apart from so many other One Piece games, even though I haven't played it yet. But just from what I can see is the balance. From what I'm able to tell, the game is balanced depending on what you're using. You don't need to be using a freaking Allosaurus fruit to beat some dude that just has regular fist and hockey. Now I'm hoping that skill comes into play. This will be what I really care about. If skill is like a huge aspect in this game, then it'll bring everything together. If not, uh, that's going to be disappointing. But this has been my top 10 upcoming games of 2024. Have y'all enjoyed this? I feel like I missed some things, which I probably did. I apologize. Let me know down below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that sub button. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.